Welcome to Foss North, the virtual edition. We would like to thank all our sponsors and partners in this difficult situation. Our gold sponsors, Luxoft and Ansible by Red Hat. Our silver sponsors, ITRS Group and Make It Right. Our base sponsors. Our partner projects, the open source community and the region of Gothenburg. And a huge thanks to our awesome community. This would not have been possible without you. Hello everybody, my name is Dimitris and I'm going to talk to you a bit about getting started with your smart connected vehicle project. The twist is that I'm not talking about an actual proper vehicle, but a mini project grade uh, robot that I've been working with for, for the last years. Uh, so very briefly about me, I'm uh, Dimitris, grew up in uh, Rhodos, Greece. Uh, I work for uh, Edument uh, and uh, Gothenburg University. I like embedded systems, software architecture, API, and I'm a lot into open source. Uh, so pretty much every evening I am into different open source projects and especially I really like ones that are uh, involving both software and hardware. Even though I'm uh, at, uh, basically a software guy, I do like to play around with hardware. I see it as the necessary evil to do cool stuff, uh, if I may say so. So I'm going to briefly talk about uh, the smart car uh, and uh, we like to call it the versatile and easy to use uh, platform for whole big grade projects. Uh, so in a nutshell, uh, it's a platform, uh, it, uh, the, the focus is on software. So it has a pretty much hardware agnostic uh, library, um, meaning that it can work on multiple boards and with multiple uh, motor and uh, car vehicle setup configuration. And additionally, it has uh, built-in support for multiple sensors. Uh, the latest iteration of the hardware, because remember, you can just take the software and run it wherever. The latest iteration of the hardware has uh, is based around an ESP32 microcontroller. And this gives us uh, access to connectivity uh, with uh, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. And even for the more advanced users, uh, some real-time operating system functions. It comes with a microscope, uh, wheel encoders that are able to measure uh, how much the car has moved and also towards which direction. It has some sockets for uh, four micro LiDAR uh, sensors, uh, five volt tolerant pins, which is very important for uh, hobby projects uh, since many low grade chip sensors still work on five volts. It takes uh, eight AA batteries and it is uh, fully open source software and hardware. Uh, let me move on if I can find. So the, I hope this shows up well, it's many videos. So this uh, project uh, has been used in, uh, in order to teach uh, students about uh, systems de development in Gothenburg University for the last, uh, I think four or five years. Uh, so students get one of these cars in the videos you can see some older versions of the car that we're using in Arduino Mega so a much simpler approach uh, and uh, the idea is that they get a car and their tasks in the compulsory university course is to create a system around it and during the course they learn that uh, there are challenges uh, when working with a cyber physical system and it's not only about the code it's about integrating the code that runs from different uh, physical components, uh, making sure that quality is being assured uh, continuously, things are being tested automatically uh, and so on. So you should definitely check those, uh, their projects out. They've been doing for the last, uh, as I said, four or five years. Uh, and um, perhaps I, I would like, if it's possible, I would like to see if I can share uh, my Visual Studio code. No, it's not really, doesn't like it, but I can probably share my desktop. Uh, and I hope you can still see it. Uh, if not, uh, if you cannot see Visual Studio code, please let me know, Johan. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to write, uh, get started with a very simple, uh, 
and the common on the other hand uh, setup. Uh, so this is, by the way, a very bare minimum Arduino sketch. And I will quickly just mention, uh, setup is uh, the function that gets run once on every boot of the microcontroller. And loop is a function that basically it's like a while true statement. Everything that is in it runs after the setup and then runs continuously. So you could get started very easily. You could uh, include the, the smart car library. Uh, and then we would naturally start by assembling the car in code. So the, the whole library is very object oriented. Let's say we have two brass uh, motors. Uh, sorry. And I will call it uh, left. Uh, motor, and then you specify the GPIO pins that uh, the motor is connected on. Let's say for the for this presentation that it's connected, the two pins that determine the direction are 12 and 13, and pin 14 uh, specifies the speed, so it's a PWM uh, uh, signal. Uh, let's create the second motor. Uh, I will put it on uh, 15, 16, and uh, 17. Uh, so now, and there is support for other kinds of motors that like motors controlled via an ESC or a, a servo motor for steering. Uh, so the idea is that you can control your car in two different ways. Uh, you can control it like a tank, uh, which is the default uh, case with a platform that we've supplied the students. But uh, you could maybe have a very different car that has an actual steering wheel. Um, so these things we call differential control and Ackermann control. And uh, regardless of your setup, uh, you could use these motors uh, since uh, you know the inherit the classes are uh, following pretty good uh, interfaces. But uh, in our case, let's control it like a tank and and uh, all right uh, motor. Uh, so after we have. Um, uh, establish the way we control a car. Let's add some sensors. Uh, we are going to use this uh, GY50 uh, gyroscope and we're going to specify an offset for it, which is the value that it uh, gives when it's being uh, completely still. And let's add some uh, uh, gyroscopes, which we call uh, odometers, left odometer, where you specify the pin. Let's say it's pin, in number, in pin number one. Then we specify a lambda, which is the interrupt service routine uh, that will be invoked once a pulse comes. Uh, and we want to, uh, sorry, keep that. Oops, sorry, I have a very small screen so you can see. I might have done uh, a spelling mistake somewhere, but so. Yes, yes. So let's see how this goes. So after you have set up everything, and uh, you probably also need to specify somewhere the pulses per meter, but I'll leave that later. You eventually create your car out of everything, your way of controlling uh, the gyroscope and the two odometers uh, that you have. And you need uh, one more semicolon. <laughs> yeah, I, I know I have done other problems. Uh, let's ignore those for now. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> so I'm not going to run this. Uh, it's just a mock-up. So if you basically then to control it, you can use the set speed and you may want it to 50% of the speed motor running forward. And you may want it to start turning uh, at 20 degree angle. So depending on your uh, setup, if you have an actual, depending on your way of controlling the car, actually, uh, this will try to simulate uh, a 20 degree angle movement. Or if you would have a way, an Ackermann control, meaning with an actual steering wheel, it would actually turn your servo motor at uh, 20 degrees. Um, let me try to share again uh, my Chrome window. Uh, so yeah, 
I, I, I believe I, I'm good in time. So uh, overall, you can find everything, uh, hardware, uh, software. So if you see it, the new platform is made up of two PCBs that are stacked on top of each other, uh, where you can basically solder everything and put everything all snugly uh, on it so things don't fall apart. Uh, you can find this is a quick uh, link to the repo. Uh, everything is published with an MIT license. And uh, if we have time, I'm willing to take any questions. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, first of all, this is Henrik, by the way. Uh, I, Bray, always nice to see someone live hacking. Mm -hmm. That's mucho <laughs> macho. <laughs> There, there were some uh, syntax errors, so forgive about that. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, I'm wondering, uh, I saw that you're using I know, because uh, I myself, so I, this is an ego trip from my side. Um, mm -hmm. What do you think about the Arduino IDE and as compared to a more like command line uh, version that you're using now? I am still using the Arduino ID to upload yeah. and flush the microcontroller. Uh, I know there may be some more advanced solution like platform IO, uh, but uh, I'm typically using the ID to push to finally like push the code. Oh, okay, interesting. Hmm? Yeah, I'll, I'll send you a link to my project. <laughs> yes, awesome. Thank you. Yeah.